hello, I am here with the books that I read in September. Uh, I did not have a theme for September. I just read what I wanted to read. I did not read as much as I wanted to read, but I still did read three books. So let's talk about them. The first book that I read this month, I listened to on audio, and that was You and Me at the End of the World by Brianna Bourne. I really enjoyed this, and I am not very good at listening to audiobooks. It's really difficult for me to actually be able to pay attention the whole time. Most of the time, my mind wanders, and it's been 20 minutes before I realize I haven't been listening. Sometimes I can get through an audiobook without this happening, though, and this was one of them. I did have to listen to it at 1.5 times speed, though. If I listened to it at regular speed, it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to be paying attention to it, but at 1.5 times speed, it was good. You and Me at the End of the World is about a guy and a girl in high school, I think in grade 12, who find themselves to be the only people left in their city. Nobody else is around and they have no idea what happened. And now these two people know who each other are, but they're not friends. They've never really interacted before. They go to a really big high school and so they know of each other, but that's about it. And then of course they bond um, and take comfort in each other because they're the only people around. Nobody else is around. Nobody knows what's happened. What, what happened? They don't know. <laughs> so the story is very character-based. It is not a plot-based book. There are a few exciting things that happen in it, um, but mostly it's just about them getting to know each other and getting to know themselves and becoming comfortable with themselves um, and fighting their own like inner demons, basically, that are coming up because there's nothing else for them to do. There's, it's just the two of them left. They don't know what else is happening and they basically confront all of their feelings. I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed listening to it. This actually has dual POV. So um, it's written in the first person with one chapter being told by the guy and one chapter being told by the girl. And I really liked the girl's narration. I wasn't a huge fan of the way the guy narrated. I did end up getting used to it, but I still wasn't a fan of the way he like emphasized things. Um, I feel like he put emphasis on the wrong words when he was talking, but, um, other than that, it was really good. And I just thought it was such a joy to listen to. Like I was looking for things to do around my house so I could keep listening to it. Uh, it was great. I can't talk much more about it without spoiling it because the whole point of the story is that you don't know what's going on. So I can't tell you what when you find out what's going on because it's like at towards the end and everything. But uh, there's like a lot of really cool stuff that happens in it and some fun things that they do. They go on a few adventures and they just get to know each other and themselves a lot better throughout the story. The second book that I read was Every Summer After by Carly Fortune, and I really liked this book as well. This book actually takes place in Barry's Bay, Ontario, which was so fun for me. Um, we used to drive through Barry's Bay every single time we went to the cottage or went to see family in Ottawa. So that was exciting for me. Like, we never stayed in Barry's Bay, but we always drove through it, and... I, I, so it was just really cool for me. And so this is basically a, a then and now story. So it has alternating chapters of what happened when she was a kid growing up and what's happening now. Um, almost kind of like uh, Malibu Rising. It's told in the same way that the now story is taking place over a very short period of time and the then story is taking place over a large span of years, the way Malibu Rising did, if you read Malibu Rising. Uh, so I think it has similarities in that aspect. Uh, but so basically it is about a woman who has lived in Toronto all of her life, except that her and her family had a cottage that they stayed at for the entire summer, every summer in Barry's Bay. And she became friends with the next door neighbors who lived in Barry's Bay full time and, uh, had a crush on one of the boys and they had a very slowly growing friendship slash relationship over the years. Um, so we get to read about that in the then chapters. And then in the now chapters, they haven't talked to each other in years. They're not friends at all. You don't know why. And she is going back to Barry's Bay for this guy's mother's funeral. Basically, this book just felt like pure nostalgia to me. There were very, very small portions that took place in Toronto. Almost the entire book takes place in Barry's Bay. And it all was so it just was so comforting to me and nostalgic. Like I felt everything, like just the way anything was described about the cottage and the dock. They would go to Barry's Bay for Boxing Day and Thanksgiving. And there wasn't even a lot of like atmospheric descriptions, but still the very tiny things that were brought up 
just brought me back to my childhood and made me feel like I was there experiencing my own Boxing Day or my own Thanksgiving. The way certain people did certain things and the things that people said. Everything about it was super nostalgic to me and um, all the cottage descriptions were super nostalgic to me. It was so lovely and wonderful. (laughs) So that was great. I wasn't a huge fan of where the story went. Um, I still really enjoyed it and I don't want to give anything away, but there is like some uh, stuff that happens in it that I don't really like (laughs) in stories, but um, it wasn't hugely focused on and it wasn't like, it wasn't uh, like, you know, the story, the story wasn't centered around this thing that I didn't like. It was a small portion of the story. uh, So that's why it didn't really, you know, knock anything down for me. There was a couple detailed sex scenes in it, but not, I think there was only one actually, one or two, and that's about it. But yeah, I just thought it was a really nice story. (laughs) And the last book that I read was All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is about a girl in high school in Ireland who comes across a pack of tarot cards, and she ends up learning tarot, and she's really good at it. It's really easy for her to connect with the cards and to understand what they mean, in, especially in relation to the people that she's doing readings for. It's just super easy for her. And she does readings for kids at school. And then she ends up doing a reading for someone who used to be her best friend, but hasn't been her friend in a few years. And it doesn't really go well. And then the friend goes missing. So this girl ends up becoming friends with somebody else and the missing the missing friend's brother, and they all get caught up in, like, witchcraft, basically, and trying to figure out what happened to this missing girl, and they think that, you know, she's been taken by a spirit, and they, you know, plan spells and rituals and stuff to try and save her. It was really good. There was a lot of, like, queer characters in it, which was fun. There is some, like, hate violence, though, like, queer hate violence in it, um, in case that's something that bothers you. Uh, it's only once, it's only a couple times and it's not hugely, it's not like described in full detail or anything, but it is like two like kind of major scenes in the book where this happens and like people get hurt and stuff. Um, if that's anything that you need to prepare yourself for or anything, but I just thought the story was a lot of fun. Uh, I did find that it kind of dragged a little bit sometimes, but other than that, it was really enjoyable and I really liked it. Those are all the books that I read in September. (laughs) 